What's the word, y'all? We back with another reaction. Today, we got another article. Uh, there's nothing better than a good old trade article. And I must preface this by saying that making a trade article with something like this, where you have to incorporate every NBA team, it's hard. It's very, very hard. But I'm here to be critical of it. Trades are hard, man. Trades are really, really hard. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Shout out to Grant Hughes and BR for creating this article content for us to either agree with or disagree with, and I give my reasons why. The best trade every NBA team can actually make this offseason. That makes me think that he's going with the realism aspect, and I'm living in this fantasy world of somebody trading the second overall pick and getting the superstar player type stuff that i've seen in previous articles so let's get into it all 30 nba teams started with the atlanta hawks the atlanta hawks acquired rudy gobert and joe ingles from the utah jazz for clink appella deandre hunter kevin herter Woo. and his sixth overall pick no i do not do this deal if i'm the atlanta hawks you want to know why because this man right here though he is a dominant force defensively especially in the low post in the in the paint area somebody's gonna have to pay him and i don't want to be the guy to have to pay rudy gobert especially since he is up for a supermax now, just because somebody's up for Supermax, don't mean you have to pay him the Supermax, but he's going to be thinking about that Supermax. I can't do this deal. I mean, BR just published an article a few weeks ago talking about the top blank players under the age of 23, and guess who was on there? These two guys. You're going to trade both of your, two of your top players under 23 or whatever, and the sixth overall pick for a guy that's about to be a free agent, and the guy that is aging, and we saw him in the bubble not look amazing. I mean, sure, it, I mean, and you're also trading a click appella who ain't played a single minute for you. You don't even know how that experiment is going to work. Um, does it make you better? Rudy Gobert does make your defense dramatically better, um, for sure. But there's still a ceiling on the team with Rudy Gobert as your as a super max type player you know what i'm saying i would i would pass on this deal if i'm the hawks if i am the utah jazz this is kind of like i don't hate this deal for the utah jazz honestly considering click appella or or contingent off click appella is actually still decent i mean you replace joe wingle's productivity with these two guys and then you're not going to get rudy gobert obviously you're talking about an all nba player but you get a guy that can roll to the rim protect the, the paint and get rebounds too um next we have the boston celtics they're acquiring Miles Turner, Jeremy Lamb from the Indiana Pacers for Gordon Hayward in the 14th overall pick. I would love this deal for the Boston Celtics. Um, I mean, having Gordon Hayward back, probably one of the reasons they won last game. But for the most part, they have been relatively successful without him in the lineup this year. And they do need a better rim-protecting center. I do like Daniel Tice a lot, but he just... He does his best. He tries his best, but there's just some things he can't do. And Miles Turner would be able to do some of those things. So I don't hate this deal for them. Now, from the Boston Celtics standpoint, um, oh, they're giving two first-round picks. Now, if you're giving two, I don't really know about that. Jeremy Lamb is going to be coming off an Achilles injury, too. Uh, I don't do that deal. Next, we have the Brooklyn Nets. Uh-oh, Joel Embiid. You get Joel Embiid from Philly. But you have to throw in Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jared Allen, 19th overall pick, and a 2022 first-round pick. If I am the Brooklyn Nets, I look at this offer and I'm like, sure, let's get that third star. Who's going to stop us out east if we have Kevin Durant, we have Kyrie Irving, and we have Joel Embiid? Only team that's stopping them is themselves. Honestly. Honestly. And these are guys that are good NBA players. I mean, the one thing you would worry about is the depth of your team now. Because Spencer Davis is one of the better six men in the league this year. Kyrie Levert is I think Harris LeVert has really good potential still. And then Jared Allen is good too. Um, but I would still take the chance here and kind of do like the Miami Heat. Y'all remember those Miami Heat takes didn't have a lot of depth when they were winning championships. Uh, they just kind of relied on their top three guys and like everybody else. If we could get 10 points from Mario Chalmers, we'll take that. If we could get a couple three points from Ray Allen, we'll take that. Uh, so I would I would do that. But from the, from the 76ers, you got to be thinking like, even though Joel Embiid was talking about that commercial when he said, I'm still unhappy, maybe he walked into the office and said, trade me. And if you're going to trade Joel Embiid, how is this package for your team? Specifically talking about their team. You get more shot creation. That's one thing they've needed. Uh, we saw when they had the injuries that nobody on the team could create. With Ben Simmons being out, they didn't really have another guard that can play make, and you have that in Spencer Dinwiddie. I do, again, I do trust that Karis LeVert is going to be better next season, and Jared Allen's a really good player. So if you're going to trade Joel Embiid, I don't think this package is is bad. 
I know a lot of fans without the out there would love to get like a, oh we're gonna trade our superstar so let's get a superstar in return but that's usually not the way you you don't trade a superstar for a superstar under like it just doesn't work that way usually next the Charlotte Hornets trade Terry Rozier for Steven Adams eh you know what I'm saying that's what that deal is this is kind of eh I mean, I'm guessing that they're gonna they're saying that you get Terry Rozier because you're gonna have to trade Chris Paul and you just got another three three guard rotation. No, but it doesn't it doesn't do anything. If I'm trading anybody on my OKC team, I'm still looking for future assets. And though Terry Rozier is not old or anything, I, I I feel pretty confident saying that like he's not gonna get significantly better to the point where like he's gonna be one of your top guards when OKC eventually gets back into contention. So I'm like, nah, I. Uh, I mean, sure, for the Charlotte Hornets, they've been missing that center position. They've been trying to pay centers. Cody Zeller, Bismack Biombo. They've tried to continue to get a center that can help them out, and they can't. Steven Adams might be that, but he might not be. Next, we have the... No. 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 They're... We're not taking the worst contract in... Okay. The Bulls acquired Tobias Harris, an unprotected 2020 first-round pick, and a 2020 second-round pick from Philly for Otto Porter. I mean... Obviously, Otto, I mean, uh, Tobias Harris is a better player than Otto Porter Jr. That is a fact. But he also just signed a super crazy contract that is, uh, if we do trade for that, it's going to be hard to move it. And yeah, we get a future asset and a 2020 second round, 2022 first round pick. But like, under this new regime, I would like to keep the money available for, for 2021. I'm not saying that the Bulls are going to sign nobody crazy, but I definitely don't want to give a close to a, like a max contract to Tobias Harris, I don't, I don't want to be the team paying Tobias Harris at the end of the day. For the Philadelphia 76ers, I think this is a deal. I mean, Otto Porter can't stay healthy, but when he is healthy, he's good. And you're getting off of that, that big old contract. And yeah, it does cost you a couple picks, but you're getting off that big old contract. I'm saying no if I'm the Bulls, though. The Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, my God. Look at this guy, Harrison Barnes. He is scruffy. You get Harrison Barnes, Jabari Parker, and the, the swap rights are the 2021 first-round pick for Kevin Love. I know Cavs fans love them, so Kevin Love, but eventually you're probably going to have to part ways for him, with him. Um, and you're really doing this deal for the pick because Jabari Parker is not good. And Harrison Barnes is cool, but he doesn't move the needle for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So you're really doing this in hopes that this pick is going to be solid. Eh. Dallas gets Josh. Okay, first of all, the 76ers have been incorporated in, what, four trades out of the seven? Dallas Mavericks acquired Josh Richardson from the 76ers for Seth Curry in the 18th overall pick. That'll give them more shooting. Josh Rich is good. He plays good defense. Um, he has his moments where he looks really, really good. But I'm guessing they're like, okay, we need to surround Ben Simmons with just like shooting, shooting, shooting. And Seth Curry is a uh, top three percentage shooter of all time. So I understand that aspect of it. Um, I could see a, a deal like this happening. I could. I could. Josh Richardson add, would add another dynamic from Dallas Mavericks, but I'm sure Dallas Mavericks fans love them from Seth Curry because he plays significantly. He said he plays amazing with Luka. Oh, you just need a guy that's going to catch and shoot the ball? Sure, Seth Curry does that. Trade number eight. You have Drew Holiday for Gary Harris, Will Barton, a 2020 first-round pick via Houston. So that pick is what? Like 21-22, maybe, something in that realm. I would do this deal if I'm the Denver Nuggets. I would. Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday is really, really good. Every player that talks about Drew Holiday talks about how he is the hard, the best defender in the league. And though he did not make an all-defensive team, that tells you, we already talked about this on yesterday's video a couple days ago, how the voting system in the NBA is flawed. All of his peers, all of Drew Holiday's peers have had a consensus that he is one of the best defenders in the league, but the voters do not. do not. Um, so he adds that, I would, I would do this deal for both teams. And here's why I would do this if I'm the New Orleans Pelicans. Drew Holiday doesn't really fit the timeline anymore. He's 30, it says right here. The 30-year-old doesn't fit the top. That's literally the words I said. He doesn't fit the timeline um, for Zion and them. And then you get a guy like Gary Harris who's shown moments in the last couple years where he could still go up and average 15-plus points per game. He's also a good defender like Drew Holiday. Not to Drew, Holiday, Drew Holiday's level, but he's a very good defender. You get a pick. Will Barton is a nice guy as well. I would do this deal. This is probably the first deal that I see, and I can really be like, okay, I can see that from both, both teams. Both teams. Detroit acquires Iggy and Kelly Olenek. And the 20th overall pick in the Heat get Derrick Rose. See Derrick Rose on a team that's winning? Tch, count me in as a fan. Uh, but the, the Detroit, they get a pick. I mean, that's all Detroit should be thinking about. Sure, you're going to have to pay Iggy an extra year. Kelly Olenek is going to opt in because he's worth, I think it's like $15 million or something crazy like that. But you get a pick. You get a pick for Derrick Rose. I would do that deal. And from the Miami Heat aspect, Derrick Rose. You know what I'm saying? W's. 
Ooh, the Warriors. Um, the Warriors acquired Robert Covington from the Houston Rockets and seven for seventeen point two million dollars in traded player exception and unprotected twenty twenty two first round pick. Oh, I thought this was gonna have to do with that second overall pick. Uh, for the Warriors standpoint, I mean, you get Robert Robert Covington, such a good player, such a good player. So I can see that. Um. Houston opens up some cap. I mean, James Harden was saying they were one piece away and trading away Robert Covington, even though he was really good for them, opens up some money for them to maybe get that piece, whoever it may be. So I could I could see this being a, a, a good trade for both teams if the Houston Rockets are confident that they can use this money to get that third player for them, whoever that may be. I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. Next, the Houston Rockets. Are, no, wait, are these deals supposed to be together? Wait, 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 are, we, are these deals supposed to be together? Okay, first of all, I, I posed the deal like this on Twitter the day after or the day of the Houston Rockets getting eliminated and people call me crazy and I was just talking. I was literally just talking, but I've been seeing it in articles and stuff from here on out. So we see Blake Griffin go to the Rockets and a first round pick, uh, a lot of protection on it for Russell Westbrook. It's a trade I drew up on Twitter. So do these two trades supposed to go together? No. There's no way those trades go together. Either way, um, though this is an interesting trade, I can't see it happening. Uh, I, Detroit fans will probably love this because Russell Westbrook is still a good player and he's he's an exciting player to watch. Uh, Rockets fans, maybe not so much because Russell Westbrook is still a good player and exciting to watch. Unless Blake Griffin is back to like the first year in Detroit, Blake Griffin, where he's an all-NBA player, I don't see this trade being a, a, a good trade for Houston. But it would add a different dynamic, man. I, I would be interested to see it, but I don't know if Houston would be crazy enough to pull the trade off. Next. I mean, if anybody's going to be crazy, it's Daryl Moore. In a good way. I like Daryl Moore. It's just like some of the trades are crazy, but he, he's always pushing the envelope and trying to make things happen. Indiana Pacers. Oh, oh, the Holiday Brothers. Just get them all together, huh? Aaron, Drew, and Justin? They acquired Drew Holiday in a 2020 first round or second round pick, and they trade Miles Turner and Doug McDermott. I like this trade because though I do see Zion mostly being like a good five, like a center in his league, if there is a center you want to put alongside Zion, it's a center that can stretch the floor, and that could be Miles Turner. I was very uh, confused on all the minutes we saw of Derek Favors and him together. I'm, I mean, because Derek Favors is like their best center on the roster, so I understand it, but it's like it just didn't really work out too well, and this could definitely do that. Uh, and Miles Turner is still pretty young. I don't hate this deal either. I'm seeing a lot of deals that like, may maybe I don't do it, but it's not like, bro, what are y'all talking about deal? So I don't hate this deal either. I don't hate this deal either. The Clippers... The straight up one for one, Jalen Brunson for Landry Shamit. Um, Dallas, if they're gonna trade Seth Curry, they need more shooting, and that's Landry Shamit. And then the Clippers don't have point guard play. And that could be Jalen Brunson because Jalen Brunson's been really good. He's only he hasn't got had a season where he had 20 plus minutes per game. But when he in the minutes he is given, he's usually pretty solid. So I can see that. I can see that. Um, I think he might be a little bit more valuable than Landry Shamit, but I don't know. Landry Shaman's rookie season was really good, and since then, he's been cool. Don't get me wrong. He, I just thought he's going to increasingly get better, and he hasn't been that. But you know what? He's like a, what, three, four-year college athlete, so he came into the league maybe as who he is, and that's still a good shooter. Next, the Lakers pull off a deal to get Dennis Schroeder for Kyle Kuzma. Now, this is a cut-it-out moment for OKC. Uh, Dennis Schroeder was amazing this season, like legitimately an, an amazing backup and was in contention for six man of the year. I, he would have got my vote, but I, I'm okay with Montrezl Harrell winning it too. I'm not trading Dennis Schroeder if the only thing I'm getting back is Cal Kuzma. I'm sorry. And Cal Kuzma's cool. He's been playing really solid recently. But I, I, I can't trade this guy for this guy. No, OKC hangs up the phone. Memphis Grizzlies. Patty Mills for Kyle Anderson going back to San Antonio. Patty Mills making a lot of money. And for me, he's a Spurs for a lifer. So I'm going to say no based on that. Miami Heat. Wait, LaMarcus? LaMarcus Aldridge for Iggy, Kelly O'Lenick, and a second-round pick. I'm going to say no to this because it would change the dynamic of how they play the game. Are we going to have Bam and LaMarcus playing minutes together? I don't like that. I don't. I don't. I would. I, would, I mean, sure, you're not giving up much to, to attempt it, but I think you would have to reformulate your whole, like, offensive scheme. I guess if there's anybody that can do it, it is Eric Spolstra. But, like, I don't really need a guy low post, mid-range area. And though LaMarcus did have a portion of the season where he was lethal from three, that's just not really... I, I don't like that deal for, for Miami. No, thank you. Just because of the fit. You're not giving up much to have make it happen. But fit-wise, it's just, just be kind of weird. 
The Bucks trade, I mean, we've seen this a bunch. Chris Paul getting trade for Eric Bledsoe, Ersan, Robin Lopez, Dante in a first. I'm doing this deal for both sides. I still think it's the worst wild deal for OKC. They get Dante in a first round pick. Those are their two future stars. And you also get in a good role player, I mean, a good starter point guard in Eric Bledsoe. I would do this deal for both sides. Then the Timberwolves also trying to get Dennis Schroeder. And they're going to go for, I mean, James Johnson opting in in a second round pick. Maybe I'm wild for thinking that he's worth more than this, but both of these trades for Dennis Schroeder, I'm like, no, I'm hanging up the phone. A last contract, James Johnson in a 2022 second round pick, I'm hanging up the phone for both of the trades. Tell me if I'm crazy in the comment section. Is he worth less than what I'm thinking? Because these are trades I'm like, no. Next. Oh, Pelicans. I see Tyler Hero. Let's see. Pelicans get Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, and Kelly Olenek for Drew Holiday. For Drew Holiday. It's going to be hard to convince Heat fans to trade Tyler Hero based on how he's played since we got back into basketball. That is a fact. Um, and for that reason, it's probably why I maybe say no, because Heat fans will they would they would burn the city down. Like Tyler Hero is their boy. You know what I'm saying? And though again, Drew Holiday is significantly better of a player. I think they're baking on Tyler. Like Tyler Hero is still so young. We gotta remember that too. I'm pretty sure he's a one and done player. So I, I don't know how to gauge this because I don't think I don't think Pat Riley can tell the fans, hey, we're trading Tyler Hero. Especially if you're not getting a superstar in return. I, I'm just saying, I'm just I'm not saying Tyler Hero's worth superstar player. I'm just saying, like, there are certain situations where you have to it, it's hard to tell your fans that you're trading a fan favorite. That's all. It's simple. That's all. That's what happened with the Bulls, right? When the Bulls traded Derrick Rose, we didn't get much back, but it was it was hard for the front office to explain to us why we traded Derrick Rose. Next. Oh, especially if they end up going to the championship too. You know what I'm saying? Unless we see something in the championship. Again, if they make it there, they're like, oh, we needed more defense and Drew Holiday could be that guy. Either way, next. The Knicks trade for Chris Paul in this. They, they're throwing in Frank Nielakeen and Wayne Ellington in the first round pick via the Clippers. So that pick is what, 25-ish? Like it's a, it's a late pick because it's it's not New, New York Knicks pick. Reminder, it's not New York Knicks. This is the Clippers pick. And if that's the case, I mean... I would probably hope to get a little bit more for Chris Paul, but in this situation, you're getting Frankie Smokes, who I think he still has potential left. I don't know. Maybe not potential to be a starter in this league, but he has potential to be a, a good backup defender for sure. You get a pick, even though it's a late first. I mean, New York, they'll be doing this for a culture change because New York needs winning basketball and Chris Paul can help them win. But from OKC, maybe you would want a pick that's a little bit higher than late 20s. Maybe. Next. It's the same deal. Literally. Wait, no? They're quite... Wait, wait, wait. How are you going to tell me that the Knicks should pull off the trade to get Chris Paul to give up this much and then in the very next trade say, no, we should give up this much? So Kevin Knox, Frank Lillikeen, and Dennis Smith Jr., the Clippers pick, and the Dallas pick for Chris Paul? So why would I accept this deal for these guys if you could tell me I could get these guys instead and an extra pick from Dallas? Sign me up for trade 21 before trade 20. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Kevin Knox is still super young. He did pull up to the NBA draft with a Fortnite jacket on, but he's still pretty young. Next, Orlando Magic get the second overall pick. Count me in. I don't care. Count me in. Orlando needs to blow it up. A second, The second overall pick? Yes, count me in. I mean, you're trading a 15th in Aaron Gordon. Count me in. Count me in. Count me in if I'm Orlando. You need you need to hit the reset. I'm sorry. What you have now is just like, hey, we're good enough to be the seventh A seed every single year. No, get the second overall pick. Stockpile those assets and keep it going. Philly trading for Chris Paul, including Al Horford from Matisse Stiebel, a first-round pick, and Mike Scott. Uh, for Philly, this would be interesting. I don't know how him and Ben Simmons work together. But Chris Paul could play off the ball. Chris Paul's always been a guy that could play off the ball. I hated that. He's 2-2 he's two, two ball dominant. We've seen the last two spots he's played in Houston. They were good when he was off the ball. And OKC, he was very good when he was off the ball because he shared the backcourt with two other guards. So stop that. Stop that narrative. Um, so maybe it would work out. I mean, I would do this deal if I'm OKC. Sure, you're paying another really bad contract in Al Horford, but you get Matisse, and I, I think Matisse has great, great potential and a first-round pick. You're, oh, you're getting your pick back. Okay, you're getting your pick back and Matisse Thybul. I would do that. Matisse Thybul and Lou Dort as your wing defenders. I mean, you may not be scoring a lot of points, but you're stopping a lot of people. You understand me? Uh, Phoenix Suns, the second overall pick for Kelly Oubre in the 10th pick. And you get the the seventeen point two trade uh, trade exception. I might do this deal if I'm Philly. I mean, not if I'm Philly. If I'm Phoenix, 
I mean, the Suns play really, really good. I mean, eight and no. Kelly, Kelly Oubre is a good player, but they play really, really good without him. And I am a firm believer in that the Mikael Bridges, Mikael Bridges, uh, Cameron Johnson, three and four. I think it's going to be really, really solid. Kelly Oubre just might be the odd man out. And if you could trade him, get the second overall pick and get a lead, another guard. Like Ricky Rubio was very good for them. But if I could keep Ricky Rubio for a year and have LaMelo Ball just chilling, learning. So you have a lineup the next year of LaMelo Ball. The, 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 the Devin Booker guy, the Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, and DeAndre Ada, sign me up. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kelly Oubre. But and maybe it's better for you. You go into a situation where you can compete with the Warriors. I would do this deal. Uh, I would do this deal if I'm, I'm Phoenix. Next, the Trailblazers acquire Aaron Gordon, and they're trading Trevor Reza, Anthony Simons, a 2020 first-round pick that's lottery protected, converted into two seconds if it conveys. Um... For the Trailblazers, yeah, yeah, this is a this is a very good deal for them. For the Orlando Magic, I mean, you you'd be waiting a couple years to reap the assets um, of the trade, and it's still lottery protected, and it could end up turning to two seconds. Um, no, I don't really like that from there. Yeah, ah, I don't really like that for them. But for the Portland Trailblazers, that would be amazing. The Kings. Acquire Jared Allen, Kuroots, and Torian Prince for Buddy Hield in a 2022 second. Uh, Buddy Hield is a guy that we know can play very well without the ball, so he would be a great third player to have alongside KD and Kyrie. He'll just come off screens and hit shots, so that's a beautiful match made in heaven. Jared Allen is probably going to be one that's in trade rooms because they're not going to trade DeAndre Jordan because DeAndre Jordan is Kyrie and, and KD's guy. Um, But from the Kings' standpoint... I mean, Buddy Hield is not happy, so you're going to have to probably have to trade him anyway. Jared Allen's, I'm getting, Jerry, Jared Allen is good. Him and Marvin Bagley playing together, sure, I guess. I, I would think that's, that Kings fans would want more for Buddy Hield, but maybe he's not that valuable. Spurs, Gordon Hayward, and Robert Woods for LaMarcus. I don't know, man. LaMarcus is good, but I just see him as kind of like this outdated big at this point. Again, ugh. He's not a good defender. He's older in age. I don't do this deal if I'm the Celtics. I don't. Yeah, I'm good on it. I'm sorry. I'm good on it. Raptors get Eric Bledsoe. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is a three-team trade. The first one. It's almost It's almost at the end of it, but this is the first one. The Raptors get Eric Bledsoe, Ursan, a 2023 first-round pick from Milwaukee, the 15th overall pick via Orlando and Kim Birch, and then Milwaukee gets Kyle Lowry's getting traded. Okay, Orlando gets Dante in the 24th pick. So, no. Three-team trades are so hard to do to make it make sense for each team. Orlando, magic-wise, you're trading the 15th overall pick to drop down a couple spots, like nine spots, but you get Dante DiVincenzo. I would do this deal if I'm them. Right? I would do this deal. Of course, yes, you're dropping nine spots. We get Dante DiVincenzo, who has good potential. So I do that if I'm them. If I, you're giving up another first round pick for 2023, I don't do that because what if Giannis, is, Giannis walks and this pick is going to be very, very valuable if Giannis doesn't re sign? I, I, it's a lot going on here. I'm just going to say no. Cal Lari, man, after all he's given, Toronto, we're going to trade him away for Eric Bledsoe. Oh, I mean, in this Milwaukee pick, that could be good. In the 15th overall pick. And Kim Birch. Next, Utah. We don't want Rudy Gobert either. For the same reason I said with the Atlanta Hawks, I don't want to be the team that's paying Rudy Gobert. But look at what they're... Bro, no way! Wendell Carter, Otto Porter, the fourth pick, and another first-round pick? Bro, cut... I got a screenshot this, bro. Cut it out, Grant. Grant, cut it out. This is the whole farm. This is a hold farm for Rudy. No, not a no shot. No shot. And the last one, Wiggs, Eric Pascal in the second round, second overall pick. Hey, this is if you're trying to trade Bradley Beal. This is not a bad package. Second, second overall pick. Eric Pascal's good. Wiggins is on a crazy contract, but I still believe in Wiggins is a solid NBA player. If you're gonna trade Bradley Beal, this is a pretty solid package for it. I'm still mad that they they would draw this up. What is your problem? All right, that's it. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. If you didn't enjoy it, don't. I guess just don't leave it a like. Don't dislike either because that kind of makes me sad. 
Uh, subscribe. I'm out. Peace.